This is on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. We'll do it to left. <laughs> ready? Okay. Let's do it. The meeting of the Melbourne Short Hills Business Organization is hereby called call to order. Today's Thursday, Jan, uh, June 15th, 2023. Tracy, would you please read the Sunshine Compliance Statement? Yes. Uh, notice of the time, date, location, and agenda of this meeting, to the extent known, was provided at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting in the following manner, pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 10436, the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice was posted in Town Hall and the Township's website by notification to newspapers on December 27, 2022 of the schedule for 2023 and by providing notice to the township clerk. Thanks, Tracy. Would you please stand for the salute to the flag? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Alexa Clark. Tracy Katz Levine here, Jesse Mullman. Here. Michael Carlovecchia. Here. Annette Romano. Here. Ashley Schultz. Here. <laughs> uh, Richard Wasserman. Here. Stephen Weiner. Here. Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg. Here. As we start each meeting with our mission statement, the purpose of a special improvement district is to promote, grow, and support local businesses, property owners, residents, and visitors. Milburn Township SID Ordinance designates a new district management corporation whose mission is to encourage the economic, cultural, and social vitality of Milburn Township through increased marketing and visibility, improved and renewed infrastructure, and local business development and engagement. Do we have any minutes for approval? Uh, yes, minutes from May 18th. Okay, they were attached, they were provided to everybody uh, with your packet. Has anybody, everyone had a chance to review them? Do you have, do you have any corrections or additions, deletions, et cetera? If not, can we have a motion to approve the minutes from May 18th, 2023, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on. Start with our bylaws, governance, and finance. Uh, I will kick it off. Uh, Steve uh, was contacted earlier this week, and um, our member Carlo uh, Caparuva has tendered his resignation. Um, he's citing personal reasons. So I just wanted to take a voice vote. Um, obviously this is something of his own will. And uh, I would like to take a voice vote just to accept that resignation. If I can have a motion, please, to accept uh, Carlo's resignation. Motion. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, treasurer's report, okay. Stephen. Thank you. Ah, got it, can you hear me? Yeah, all right, thank you. Included in your package, we have the um, our budget uh, summary for, um, it's actually effective May 31. So the balance in our bank, I'll just highlight a few things, but um, all the details are there for you to review. Balance at, in the bank on May 31 was $123,557. Um, just note, I wanted to highlight the special assessment. We are at an 89% collected uh, level right now, which is very good, which means we've collected $181,919 out of a total of 204,000. So that was very good. And just a notation that uh, the town actually owes us some reimbursements for some expenses for streetscape and events and things. So uh, we'll be receiving that very shortly. But overall, coming into the summer, we're in great shape. Any questions? Great shape is good shape to be in. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Um, Mr. Cooper, we have an update on Bear's property suit and an attachment. Sure, um, and really just a supplement to uh, my May report. So at our last meeting, I reported on the decision 
uh, in late April, uh, in the Bayer Properties litigation, the plaintiffs had sought an order allowing them to deposit the SID assessment into court. Uh, the court denied that, um, but we did not have the uh, decision that was placed in the record. Um, that is now in your packet. Uh, certainly worth reading through. Uh, consistent with the order, the court found that the plaintiffs hadn't met any of the standards uh, that would be applicable if the procedure was the procedure itself was even applicable. So uh, certainly read through it. If anybody has any questions about the decision uh, or any elements of it, I'd be happy to talk to you, uh, you know, separately or in the closed session. And uh, just just a brief comment. This is just a, one discrete issue. This is not this, this is not. I mean, I'm asking a question. I know the answer to, but it's a, it was on a discrete issue. This is not resolving the case in any. Yes. Yeah, so to be clear, it's it's not uh, it's not a decision resolving the entire case. Bless you. Um, the decision before the court was their application to allow the plaintiffs to deposit their SID assessment into court while the court adjudicated the overall decision as to whether the ordinance was valid or not. Um, so it was an interim application to the court, um, we'll call a motion, and that motion was denied. Uh, so the, the case continues. Uh, I believe it's about right for trial. I'm not exactly sure. The to also uh, be very clear, uh, Explorer Milburn Short Hills is not a party to the litigation. Uh, it is between the plaintiffs and the township of Milburn. Uh, so I don't know exactly where um, today it sits in terms of trial readiness, uh, but I'd say it's probably getting close there. Okay, thanks, Ryan. All right, uh, Steve, we have an audit report update. Yes, so I'm expecting within the next week or so to receive the, uh, the, the draft audit report from our audit firm which we brought on earlier this year. Uh, we've been at it for about three weeks now. Um, they were in office for one day um, and then there's been a bunch of paperwork going back and forth. Overall, it's been going quite well and I'm not foreseeing any issues. And uh, once I have that, I will share it with you. And then once we have a uh, finalized version, we'll uh, provide that to the state, we'll provide that to the town, um, and we'll also provide that to the public via our website. Of course, you'll all get copies. But um, at this point, I'm just waiting for a finalized document. Thanks. And, and then um, th no action to take on this next item. I just wanted to make everybody aware that there's a draft document in the rear, the end of your <laughs> packets. Um, look for what is a, a board member survey. This is something that... Uh, Tracy and I had talked about earlier this year is putting together an online survey uh, for the board specifically to give feedback on our operations. And so this is something that we would like you guys to complete over the summer. You'll get an email with, um, with the online form once I build it out. It'll be a multiple choice. You just click agree, disagree, et cetera. Um, and uh, it'll give myself and Amanda uh, some good information going into um, the governance meeting that we have uh, for our governance committee, which is Stephen, Michael, and myself uh, in late August. And then we'll, uh, if there's any action that needs to be taken, uh, we'll certainly do so. Um, but this will also help inform a lot of our policies and plans going into 2024. So um, you'll get an email with this probably in the next week or two. Um, there's no rush on it, but we'd like to just get everything together over the summertime and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'm um, just wanted to make you guys aware. Thank you. All right, moving on to marketing, branding, and placemaking, Amanda and Steve. Okay, um, so just some quick updates. The, um, the plan. Sorry. So just some quick updates with uh, the planters. Um, we have 27 of them out there that have uh, spring plantings. Uh, Birch Hill, we work with them again. Uh, also, they um, had cleaned up and mulched 50 tree picks. And then we're working with Milburn Climate Action that we met through Founding Day. Um, there's six planters in Short Hill Station that we provided the soil and the plants, um, but they're doing all the labor. And I believe we brought that up at the last meeting. Um, so those plants will grow and then um, they'll remove them at the end of the season and we'll put things into the fall. The Art Alley now has the bocce court back in, installed for the, the summer and uh, the selfie box is there as well. So the art alley is kind of in full swing. Um, we have summer uh, outreach campaigns that we've mentioned before. I'll be working with the marketing committee on. Um, one is promotions to the metropolitan residents. Another one is a getting to know Milburn series, uh, kind of tips and tricks, uh, you know, the 15 minute free parking, that kind of thing. Um, 
new food establishments. So we'll be working on that during the summer. We have the hurricane preparedness kit. We're going to update that. We'll send that out to all the businesses and then we'll also um, put the updated version on our website. So it's accessible to everyone. And I think that's it. It's up to see. And just an update on the signage project for lot 14 we've been talking about last couple meetings. Uh, Explore has been tasked by the town to oversee that project with a, a consulting firm. Uh, we are very, very close to the end on the um, on the, the actual uh, parking signs themselves. So Venus says municipal parking with an arrow, everything matches our branding. Um, the only holdup is we've had to go through the engineering department here in town to make sure that all the signage uh, is complying with county requirements. Um, so there can only be a certain number of signs on a post. The posts have to be able to uh, come out of the ground if they're hit by a vehicle. Um, so there's some technical compliance that we're working through, but um, all good stuff on that end. And then uh, the marketing committee has been working on uh, the replacing the two welcome uh, to Milburn, Upper Milburn Avenue signs. Um, and, and I'm gonna chat with Tracy uh, and Lex later tonight and, and we'll have a final order to go forward. So um, overall, I think probably by the time, the next time we meet, everything will be complete. All right, girls night out with you. I'm gonna, yep. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep this as brief as possible. Um, very, uh, not yet. So um, just some highlights. We raised uh, $5,000 in cash sponsorships. That's a little closer to the microphone. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, a little better, yeah. Um, okay. So $5,000 in cash sponsorships from HerMD, which is a new business that's going to be opening in August up in Wyoming. Uh, Cooperman Barnabas, Evolve Fitness Studio, and Menon Regenerative Institute. Um, $1,000 in in-kind sponsorships from Moonshine Modern Supper Club. And then we have um, our event committee members that are swag bag sponsors, uh, Kelly of Real Style Exchange, Corinne of Real Style Exchange, Nadej of Anya, Vicky of Shalas, and Jean of SLT My Skin. So a lot of support um, in kind um, and uh, financially as well. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you are a couple highlights. We worked with uh, Ms. Marstown, an influencer for this event, um, as uh, kind of to draw up attention um, and registration. So just if you wanna, it should be the first link. Not that one. Um, so I made this for them and then they posted it. This has received um, over 5,000 views as of today. So I wanted to work with Ms. Marstown as well to try and draw people in from that area, especially because they can take the train here. Um, so this was a lot of fun. And it's all part of very consistent branding that I'll show you for the event. The other one is, um, at Jessica Chu's, and we worked with her on Restaurant Week. She did a really nice job for us, so I wanted to work with her again. Um, yeah, she just had so much fun. She didn't want to leave. She just, she just started going in every every door she could. So got her braid done at Real Style, um, Cycle Bar, Pop Ups, you name it. And that video has uh, almost four thousand views as of today. That reel. So that was our event coverage. Um, general marketing, <laughs> yeah, there's, I think we recognize a few people on there. Um, general marketing, we listed um, the event on Tap Into, The Patch, Mommy Poppins, um, our press release list, Explore eBlast. The businesses individually did a lot of marketing for this event. So they were doing their own eBlast, if that's something they had. Um, I created a lot of templates for them that, again, with this branding and made it available to them so they didn't have to do a lot of work and it also all kind of was cohesive. So we shared a lot of stories uh, from, from individual businesses. Um, and then we had our street banner. It's our first street banner, at least that I'm aware of. And we said, it'll be the first of many. And uh, that was wonderful. Um, and her MD, since they were the signature sponsor, they got to have their logo on that. So um, I think that turned out really well. Um, and then we also had um, live signups. It was Kelly's idea from Real Style to set those up. So we did them at Live Breads, Taste Buddy, 
Shala's uh, cycle bar middle style exchange. And then we also had our traditional posters that I'll show you that were in about 200 storefronts. Um, I just wanna show some branding uh, items for you. So I'll go over the swag bag, but this is our swag bag. And all those sponsors are on there. <clears throat> this is the poster that we had out. This is just a sample of the event signage the day of. So everything was working with these colors, one of our branded colors. And, um, and then what we did um, is we made a, a card. So anyone that, everyone that registered or signed up in person was automatically registered to win prizes. But if they wanted to have more chances when they went into shops, if they spent money there, they got a sticker. So they could get up to four more chances to be uh, entered into the prize winnings and we're pulling this tomorrow. So this was another piece and I think you saw the banner, but this was the, the banner. It's kind of hard to small for a banner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so those are just some of the items. Uh, wise, and the committee was really happy with it. We'll probably keep the silhouette look for next year and just change up, you know, not flower something else. So um, that's just some branding um, items. Jesse, could you bring up the PDF? So these are just some pictures, highlights that uh, Chris Jordan, photography, local photographer, um, took at the event. People were just having a great time. Um, Steve and I got a chance to actually walk around and see people in stores. There's just a lot of people around with shopping bags, not just the um, swag bag. That's her MD. They're the, going to be the new business. They, they felt it was very worth it to be in the pop-up area, which I'll, I'll go over. Um, just a lot of happy faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll have more statistics on that. Um, the committee and uh, I guess it was just the committee. Uh, we spent probably about five hours stuffing the uh, swag bags, putting the stickers on them. So there's been a lot of labor of love <laughs> with the event. <laughs> Limp Reds, they did a pizza night. They're doing that on uh, Saturdays and Sundays now. So they opted to do that during Girls Night Out. They had so many pre-orders, they had to take it off their website. So it was really phenomenal. That's Stella Crispo. She's going to be performing again this summer during our concert series, I believe. Um, yeah, uh, Art of Vino had a class. I know a few people from Town Hall participated in that. Um, Julie of Splurge, they had the candy scrapers again. Um, there were two of them, and this is at Cycle Bar. They had all kinds of stuff going on at Cycle Bar. And then that's a picture of just some of the uh, the trench coats, which I believe were modeled in the last four years. And the township And so the roses here, um, these gentlemen were all handing out roses to people as they were passing by. Um, we went through about 300 roses in a half hour. So it was really wonderful uh, to see that. And uh, we even put little, those little plastic ends on them with some water and plant food so they could carry them around and not, you know, have a mess. And this, here's the committee at Moonshine. Shine. Very happy faces. I think that's it for that. Um, that's, that's just a, a few pictures. We have several. Um, <laughs> so we had uh, more statistics. We had 29 experiences and or activities. I mentioned Lib Reds um, at Garden State Hemp. Uh, they partnered with SLT My Skin and did CBD facials. Jean said she had so many requests, she, she had to turn people down and try to schedule them for another time. So she was just booked. And she also said that this has led to a partnership for another event in the future with Garden State Hemp, which we like to see. Um, the Ethical Mattress, um, he had a lot of fun. I'm sure you all saw the big mattress yes. out front. Um, uh, due to uh, the, uh, the smoke and weather conditions, we had to move some people around and it actually worked out really well. The Ethical Mattress hosted our uh, psychic. So everyone could be sitting inside and they were literally sitting on the mattresses waiting to see the psychic um, and taste buddy also relocated there as well. So you could get something to eat, 
to the psychic. And I know that uh, Brian was really happy with that, that uh, attention in that evening. Um, and then we had over 20 promotions, anything from 50% off to um, free classes, uh, things like that. And then we had our 200 swag bags. And just to give you a sense, we had so many coupons and offers that we had to binder clip them. Um, I'll leave these here, but um, we also explores contribution. We did a, uh, a glasses case with our logo on it. We looked up what women most likely put in their purse, and this was on the list. And then, Older. and funny, uh, what uh, happened was Barnabas gave us sunglasses. <laughs> so that worked out really well. And then there's just other things like really great. Um, Joanna and Jody um, did a fan. Uh, we have some nibbles from Anya and from Splurge. And then a ton more of, of cards, percentage off, free classes, even protein packs. So this was a really robust bag. And this was also number one on the list of things people were excited about besides shopping and promotions in general. The only thing we got yelled at about yeah. was every single person wore this way. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> we made it very clear it was the first 200 to pre-register. But uh, once people see something like this, they won't. So this was a, a pinch hit because the original swag bag, there was a production problem they didn't ship. So this was an overnight uh, bag. I met a lot of very patient sticker. So we made it work. <laughs> um, did you have a So Corinne from Real Style had to, so you, Amanda created that sticker right but then corinne had to literally and jeans and each one for 200 of them yeah. yeah on what tuesday night or something. that was a lot of patience uh not everyone could do that yeah. um, it, it was a great community. oh yeah no yeah um uh we also had a dj we had stella crispo that you saw we had the after party at moonshine we had the trench coat models for i believe it was 17 businesses i mentioned the roses we had event guides the prize drawings, I have three laundry baskets full of items from businesses for the uh, raffle bags. Um, so we have um, one uh, that's on its own from Alpha Fit Club that's worth over 800. And then we also have two tickets from the paper mill. And then um, Chris Jordan offered a family portrait session. Wow. So that's all getting pulled tomorrow. And then some really quick statistics. This is the cool one, and I have it to pass out because I don't think you'll believe me. Um, <clears throat> the 69 towns or cities were represented in free registration. Wow, 69. Yes. Wow. Unless I over 69 different zip codes. Yeah. Who's the furthest one? Huh? How, from uh, how Bush Kill, um, PA. Wow. That's wow. That's yeah. How many people registered overall? So pre-registration, we had uh, 528, and we ended it, um, I think it was about midnight on June 7th. We, we had another 25 or so come in that day alone. So total number about? Uh, total number, so that was 528 pre-registrants. Yeah. We had 70 walk-ups. Wow. And we had uh, approximately 500 people attending. And we that. captured a lot of their emails. And right. Their... So um, we captured that. Um, and then we have you know permission. We have to ask permission to continue to email them. So yeah. we're able to add the majority of them to our email list. Yeah, it, it really was phenomenal. Um, and then uh, let's see. Uh, one other thing was, um, how did people hear about the event? 28% said it was an invitation from a friend. 15% was from an Explore e-blast, and we had significant write-ins for work months. So that turned out to be a really great uh, thank you. Yes, thank you, Lenny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys were double yeah, teaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then tomorrow, we're going to send out a survey to the businesses about their experience, uh, as well as to the attendees. And we'll do the raffle drawing. And I think that's all I have for Girls Night Out. Does anyone have any questions? Nearby, do, do you want to put the mic on? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Annette, that's okay.
Yes, it's really it's was it was the next day. Maplewood. Yes. Yeah. I thought they were moving into the next week, but I guess not. Um, it, and it's been it's been coming anywhere. back. It's been coming back. So yeah. Somerville had one. There's been there's been a lot of them. Um, I don't know that they're to the uh, caliber of ours, um, but we just tried to make every detail matter. And um, I think it just it's another kudos to the committee yeah. for uh, all the energy and ideas and outreach. Um, so I, I think we've got we talked about we have a template. We'll just tweak. And do it again. It was fabulous, and you're right. The smiles everywhere. It was just. It was. It was a great night. Yeah. And so many people walking around the town. A lot of people walking around. Right. A lot, a lot of walking so around. Kudos to the committee and, yeah. and even very hard. And even people that didn't necessarily participate in Girls' Night Out, they were in the restaurants. They were like, "Like, what's happening? What's happening?" So it was just. Um, and and you also got traction because uh, I think it was opening night of, or the second night of Paper Mill. Right. So you had a lot of people that were in town for Paper Mill that were just like, what's this? What's this? And like, they can't park in lot one. And what's <laughs> going on here? Right. So, um, no, but I I, uh, I think it should be, you know, noteworthy that it was, uh, uh, I thought the, that set up in lot one for the businesses that, yeah, the pop-ups. That, yeah, the pop -ups, um, it afforded businesses that weren't in the downtown to have a presence um, and an exposure and a participation. And I thought that worked out very, very well. I thought the signage was great. I thought, you know, we really looked at every detail. It was like, uh, here's a list. Here's another list. So people didn't have to wait if they didn't to either register or because there was multiple opportunities for them to go to different people. Um, yes. Yeah, so I... Uh, I want to say I thought it was exceptional, and uh, and thank you to uh, the the uh, committee extraordinaire, and thank you to the leadership of the uh, dynamic duo for uh, <laughs> knocking it out of the park. I didn't really. Do much on this. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, like, I just told them what it. to do. Yeah, and it helped. I'm going to say, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, ditto to that, and just also great job on the marketing. And, yeah. You know, getting this out in so many different channels. Yeah. You know, people, it's great when people are seeing this in all kind of different. Places. And there was a big buzz around the after hours party, which I was helping with. A uh, lot, lot of new faces. Uh, let's go to the after hours party. It was kind of like a, it was, it was very hip. And a lot of people were like eager to go, even though, even though it was just, you know, like food and remember that. I think whoever's idea was the psychic, that was very smart. That brought a lot of people to the ethical mattress. Yeah, there was a lot of people. Yeah. And thank you for changing our location. It was great. Yeah, rather move you than lose you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Um, I'll admit who had more fun than that. <laughs> I had to deal with the auditor. <laughs> so she's doing girls' night out. Uh, I'm doing it. Thanks. It was, I, <laughs> um, yeah. So really, really happy. Um, summer events schedule. So I'm I'm gonna take the girls' night out web page down, and then the live music schedule is gonna go up. Steve already has all of that booked, and that's starting. Well, I'll leave that to you. Um, uh, we are going to have a uh, medical mixer at her MD in July. Uh, so looking forward to that. Already had conversations. Um, they are really organized. They have phenomenal marketing and they already have a wait list to get in there. So uh, I think it's going to be great for all the other businesses to get exposure to what they're doing. What, just is, the, to, what, what, is, what is the business? Yeah, what's a medical mixer? So like the, me the medical businesses in town to get them together. Um, so do you want to just say what her MD is? Yeah. Yeah. So it's women's health. Um, it's, uh, everything, uh, you would need except for, um, they, what they, don't, deliver babies. they don't deliver babies, everything else, <laughs> everything else. Um, and they, I went, saw, um, them, they're, they're pretty much done with construction in there. They just gutted the space. They're up uh, in my um, subway, right? That was the subway. Subway. Yeah, and um, they are very uh, experience oriented. Anything to make people more comfortable in the space they're in. Lovely lobby. Um, is this their first outpost, or is this a franchise? No, there's there's, there's many locations. Okay. Uh, 
So uh, anyway, it's a lovely space, but you all get to see that. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, we're having our uh, new business mixer anniversary party on August 31st. So please mark your calendars. Huh? Okay, I did not know that. We are partnering with the chamber on that. Um, and then the other thing that we'll- Do you really have a location yet? It looks like um, at this point, we're gonna probably do Joey's Tap and Tavern across okay. the street. Um, they do have a private party room, but we might do some outdoor experiences as well. So um, we're just planning that, but we're gonna be working with the Chamber of Commerce who has a new executive director as of a few weeks ago. Um, and we're gonna do, uh, prior to our party, we're gonna do a business mixer for some of the newer businesses in town, um, as well as some of their new members and uh, try to just coordinate that. So um, it'll be a full evening, but more information will come as we finish the planning process. We usually do it at Boxcar the last yeah. two years. Uh, we're just gonna switch it up for this year. Um, and then the, um, the other thing we're excited about, it's a new concept for us is a kid's first experience. So a lot of what we do supports the boutiques and the shops, and we really want to make sure we're support, supporting everyone. So this concept is things like a kid's first haircut, a kid's first uh, visit to the dentist, uh, first swim lesson, thing like that. And so what we're going to do, we, I already have businesses that want to work on this, and I'm going to do outreach, is we're going to create an area at Rocktoberfest um, where kids can have some type of engaging experience with each table. Um, the idea is to have, give them little superhero capes and they get like a badge at each station. And then that brings the parents to the businesses because we're looking at about a two-year-old or five-year-old age range. So it should be, it should be interesting. We'll see how it goes, but um, that's one way to chip away at the professional services. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for me. Terrific. Anybody have any uh, comments? Other than accolades for you. It's just wonderful. I was just saying, I love the, uh, I know we've been talking about it for a while, that we're starting to do these category specific events. And as we've been saying, a lot of our businesses in our city districts are the professional services, especially medical. And I say it's amazing how many kids um, enrichment type of programs there are now. They're just growing and growing like a lot of new businesses in the area. So I'm excited about doing that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Move along to Jackie and our advisory committee. See that? Yes. So, uh, wow, it feels like it was a month ago and it was, which is <laughs> missed the, um, the Sita Sunday event that was held at the Bauer Center was a Chinese and Indian dance and music showcase. I think some of my board members made an appearance. Thank you for coming, certainly. Um, and it was extremely well attended. We had probably I don't know, 250, 300 between both sets of, um, of shows, so to speak. We had the, um, the Chinese performances from one to about 2.15, took a little break, and then 2.30 to four were the Indian dance performances. We had native snacks in between. It was extremely well attended. Uh, it was just a great, great afternoon at Bauer. I think everyone really enjoyed themselves. It was, uh, it was a free event. So we really harnessed not only our own community, but I know there was a lot of people from ancillary communities that were there as well. Um, just great. And thank you to Explore for partnering with cultural engagement to really make sure it was a very professional execution. Um, you know, in the 11th hour, Steve made the magic happen, literally, with, uh, with the DJ. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was a great day. And people were really happy to be there. I think that's um, where we really uh, uh, embraced all the members of our community. So, and just to piggyback, you know, one of the things we've been talking about is, how we can engage, especially non-English speakers or non-native speakers, um, because it is a large major a large portion of our community. That event was virtually, I would say, 98% Chinese or Indian. Um, but I had an opportunity to speak to dozens and dozens of people who did not know about our organization, 
um, didn't know about Girls Night Out, um, was really able to engage people who don't normally engage with us on social media or through email blasts. Um, so it was a great opportunity to expand the net a bit. Um, so I, I think it was a very prosperous partnership between CETA and Explore. And, and I think it only helped our Girls Night Out event um, because I did see a lot of the same faces from those two events. Uh, today, I just want to mention we had a Juneteenth celebration at the library. The Township of Melbourne partnered with the NAACP of the Oranges and Maplewood, and we had some um, speeches, a little bit of a highlights of, of what Juneteenth is. Um, the NAACP, for those, I, I didn't know it until today, actually, was an organization that is 110 years old and celebrating a, a milestone. Uh, the Maplewood and Oranges chapter is the oldest in New Jersey and the third oldest chapter in the entire organization. So it was, it was quite noteworthy. We were joined today by um, the president of this of the chapter, Daryl Jeffries, the membership chair and vice president, Lady Trish Scipio, and William Brown that runs some special programming and scholarship events. So I, I thought it was a terrific afternoon. Thank you to Jesse for uh, for working with, with the NAACP of the Oranges to really make that happen. Much appreciative. Special thanks to Mike Bannock at the library. There is a very tall banner there now. So please, that's in the window, please go by. Um, the NAACP of the Oranges and Maplewood consists of, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a misnomer. It's not Oranges and Maplewood. It's 11 towns in Essex County of which Melbourne is one. So grateful for the opportunity. It is the third uh, year that we are celebrating Juneteenth and uh, I'm grateful that Melbourne participated. I was happy to be there. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, back to Steve, business advocacy. Mr. Yes. Yeah. So at the last township committee meeting, we introduced the revisions to um, the chapter of the municipal code dealing with solid waste and recycling. A very comprehensive letter was sent out to every business in town, not just those in the SID, as well as all property owners um, that are affected by the change. And I've already received some feedback by it, um, which is good. And it's definitely percolating. Um, the ordinance is slated for adoption on July 18th and the changes will become effective on September 18th. Um, I've reported on this a couple of times, so really none of the substantive um, you know, elements of it have changed, but all the information is out there. Um, people are digesting it. And so uh, as always, if anyone um, that you're talking to on the street that has questions with this stuff, they can always reach out to me. Jesse, September 18th is the key date. That's when the businesses have to have their alternate collection site in yep. place. Exactly. Okay, um, so this is our June meeting, so we're about halfway through the year, and I wanted to just give you guys a recap of where we are in terms of our business education programs. So, so far, we have hosted eight programs or eight sessions, uh, three on multimedia marketing, social media, as well as SEO, and then five on business finance uh, and development. That was through a sponsorship from Citizens Bank. Uh, in partnership with the Union County Economic Development Corporation. We are almost finished. Um, at the end of the month, we will have our ninth and 10th sessions, and then we're done for, uh, for the first half of the year. Uh, overall, it's been, it's been very interesting to see the trends. Um, there has definitely been more interest in the social media and multimedia marketing than the business development. Um, I'm surprised by that somewhat, given that we have data from our engagement last year uh, through a business survey um, that showed that businesses really do need a lot of education and training on um, how to fund themselves, how to go after government contracts, et cetera. But I get it. It's also not as interesting as how to make a TikTok reel. And so I think as we go forward, um, we're going to reevaluate our business education program for next year and probably focus more of our time and effort on the social media and marketing aspect than um, the business. So either way, I think overall, it's been very successful. I, I don't think you're going to find another SID that's executed 10 education sessions in, in six months. Um, but I think going forward, we're probably going to focus on 
uh, the multimedia, which is a good lesson learned. Um, so that is concerning. Oh, just as a reminder, uh, Tracy made mention of these industry specific events. We do have an event coming up on June 28th with Interior Motif. Uh, if you guys recall, we had a mixer there earlier this year. They're the home automation company on Upper Milburn Avenue. They're going to be hosting a uh, continuing education program for architects. And so we've invited architects, uh, interior designers, and other folks in that field. We're also partnering with the Chamber of Commerce and Union County EDC to widen the net a bit more and have them invite folks in those spheres that are members of those organizations. Um, so we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to execute that and get a nice turnout as well. So more to come on that. And that is it for me. Um, Richard is up next. Richard, yes. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, so we had a very, uh, for business advocacy, we had, we had a very uh, robust discussion about some of the issues uh, facing uh, facing the township or facing the downtown, that is. Um, and one of the topics we're looking at was zoning uh, for ground floor ground, ground floor businesses uh, in the B four, uh, which are which have medical use, could be acupuncture, uh, dentist, uh, uh, chiropractor. So there, there are a number of businesses that would need special planning board approval to have a ground floor, uh, ground floor use, and um, and other towns don't don't have that barrier. So, um, so there, there was a, we had a, a very wide range of discussion over over is that appropriate for our town? Do do we do we need that? Is that something that that maybe we'd ask in that to go back to the planning board? Uh, and discuss that, or or maybe change change the ordinance because um, right now the business wants to come into the the B four zone, which is here, which is downtown. Uh, they'd have to go to the planning board if it's uh, for certain uses like chiropractor. Or so med Act. medical is currently not permitted in B four. Correct. Or in ground floor. For ground floor. Uh, for ground floor. For ground floor. Right. Uh, but professional, it, uh, professional services so it's not just medical, not just medical. right so you know so a a lawyer right a right. uh financial advisor that's not affiliated with a bank i mean there's a lot of things that um uh that are not uh permitted that you know i understand they may have had at their time at the time they were written but as we all know the the uh the retail landscape has changed dramatically and we need to adjust with that um, as well. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't to, to interrupt you. A question, the uh, former movie theater, are they gonna have retail in the front or do we know? They, they have a bank in the front. Oh, it's a bank. So the bank allows them to have the ground floor uh, office space. Okay. It Charles Schwab. Oh. Yeah, the whole the whole floor is Charles Schwab. The front is the so bank. They're moving from yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I think there there needs to be a discussion uh, at the mean at the municipal level, um, especially with our municipal planner about are our zoning laws too restrictive? Um, do we have too much of a focus on parking requirements? Um, I, I think any any municipality should be looking at reevaluating their zoning periodically. And right now we have a very retail friendly zoning, which, you know, as Jackie just explained, I mean, we need to start thinking about other more diverse industries, especially in the downtown district. So um, we have some ideas, certainly would love to talk to the municipal planner who is obviously the expert on this, but um, it, it probably really needs to come from the TC to authorize the planner to start looking at those types of things. And as we know, that's the trend. If you go into many towns, walk in or you know, you know, walk, walk, yeah, walk in, you know, walk in is the way to go, especially for you know, medical and some other doggy daycare, you know, uh, other, which might be nice in the town. Uh, so that's so that's something we, we looked at. And um, another topic was uh, we're for general improvements. Uh, the town in the last year or two was, was asked uh, explore to help with uh, with uh, uh, signage, uh, holiday decor, um, and uh, and I think that it's something that the, I think it's the, something that the town really needs because as we approach the holiday season, 
if you look at certain parts of um, you know some of the city districts, um, you know there's not there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of holiday signage, uh, there's not a lot of holiday spirit. And um, this past year, I know that the town budgeted with with uh, Explore, you know, maybe two or three thousand dollars to help us, you know, uh, liven up the town for the holidays. I think this is something that what, what we discussed was maybe we need a larger budget, maybe we need to really focus on it. And that's something that would help the businesses and help the town. And, but instead of doing a piecemeal, maybe maybe the town would give uh, Explore uh, a larger budget and maybe we would be able to have spearhead it, uh, you know, as one, of, uh, as one of the stakeholders. Also, it's not just the downtown. I mean, yeah, uh, right. the, the, it's throughout the Morris, five business Morris districts, Avenue. you know, Morris Turnpike, Upper Melbourne, um, you know, there's a lot of the there's train station. I mean, we all know the five districts. So, um, but it's it's something that um, really needs some uh, budgetary support to really, uh, you know, yeah. we're 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 a, a, a beautiful community, and I think the uh, the decor and the holiday uh, uh, spirit should be reflected in during the season. So. It, this is the perfect thing now. It's June. Sorry. Yeah, it's, done, no, no. it's June and you know we're gonna blink and it's gonna be September. And this this is the time now where right. we really should be talking to the TC and that and uh because I think I you know good good begets good. So one, you know, and we have new neighbors at the Metropolitan. So and and Right. You know, they, they may be in Springfield, but that, that whole shopping corridor is all Milburn. Right. So it's, I think it's really important that we um, we really uh, think about this uh, strategically and, and make the commitments with the township to really um, look at this sooner rather than later and, and plan accordingly. And, and a lot of the decor, <laughs> you know, if, uh, if Explore, if we spearheaded it, and um, and we bought, or you know, if we had a certain signage or or other elements that we brought in, a lot of it's reusable. So it really is an investment. You know, so it's not a one-time shop. So if we did come up with a strategy in terms of uh, you know signage and other holiday uh, you know holiday elements, it's something that's reusable. You know, which I think, both. I, think, I, I think those are in storage and I think they came out last year, but, right. but a lot they of those, life support. A lot of those are in bad shape. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, know. Yeah. You, I think this is where it's funny. Think of, of what that would be. Would it would it be a would it be a wooden soldier or would it be a snowflake? So um a lot of these things um we have barriers to work with or work around, which a lot of the poles cannot take some of these right. things. Um, so depending on the, uh, the district, um, also a lot of this stuff is very expensive. Um, and so it's an investment for the town to make. I believe we should have a strategic plan and phase it in as we can afford to do so, um, so that everything is consistent. I've also recommended that we get the lighting installed um, before um, Diwali so that um, the majority of the community can enjoy it for all of the holidays. Uh, so I, I, I'm looking forward to it. We can be setting a meeting with the uh, with the township just to start that conversation because now is the time you're exactly Well, that's right. what I was going to ask you. So would it be something that I would like bring up in new business at a meeting or would we invite you to a meeting where you can present to the township committee what your thoughts are. Or a pre-meeting. Well, I, I don't, I don't think we're there yet. I think we need to understand from the finance committee perspective what might be available for 2023. Um, last year, I think we had maybe $4,000, if that, yeah. to spend, which was nothing right. in a district that is as large as ours. Yeah, um, and the resources and, are important. We're happy to do it. I, 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 we have the ability to do it. We have the skill to do right. it, but the resources... We can't just take out and of it, our budget and out of our. It matches our mission, right? Um, sure, but yeah. you know, we we have a twenty five thousand something like that streetscaping budget, and most of that is spent, you know, long before the summertime, just on spring plantings and things. And so, um, I think it would be helpful if the town could evaluate what could be available to us financially. 
Um, and if there's money available in new business and you have this conversation, we can certainly then put together a plan. Uh, but I think just really it's a question of what would the town be willing to provide. And we may be able, we may also be able to work with other stakeholders like the uh, Unification <clears throat> League or yeah. bring in a couple other stakeholders with us and do a great job. But I think one of the points that Steve just mentioned is that we want to have like a, a really great holiday holiday season. You know, now's the time that we need the approval on the budget and, you know, and we have to start working on it. So we would appreciate it. <laughs> you approached that so. And, uh, okay, so, uh, so uh, that was a second topic. So, and then we went over, uh, some of the uh, some parking uh, parking improvements, and uh, we we're looking. We 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 had a, a discussion over all the different types of uh, of parking passes and permits, and uh, there's a there's a number of different uh, permits that are available to uh, in the township, and I think our I think the thrust was maybe it's time to really you know think it through, streamline this. Um, and um, and instead of having so many different you know so many, so many different categories, maybe uh, maybe have fewer categories and uh, and some of the other discussion that we had was enforcement. Uh, there's a number of issues in terms of uh, in terms of uh, people that are abusing uh, uh, you know the parking spaces. There are there are so, there are some people that are continuous offenders who where they. They're parking their their cars. They should have permits. Uh, it's not enforced, and uh, and net net, it's really hurting the town because uh, because those some of those spots should be uh, held for retail and uh, and for customers and visitors from the outside. And those uh, those spots are being you know used uh, you know used by by people that should be using them. And we and 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 a lot of the discussion was about enforcement and how this goes year to year without without it being dealt with. Um, yeah, at our at our last uh, parking ad hoc, we talked about the permits, and I believe that Donna said that they were they were going to look into. You you suggested it, but they were going to look into. I'm going to do it. You're doing. It. I did it. You did. It. Okay. <laughs> That's right. So check. <laughs> <laughs> I I also think that. Yes. Okay, so I sat on this committee when I was mayor or deputy mayor or what I, I remember distinctly the uh, and there there's like a couple of things that kind of really stick out to me. First of all, I think that we have to start looking at this potentially as a 12 month, you know, not all businesses start on January 1st and end on December 31st. So when a new business comes in on June 15th, they get their permit runs from June 15th, 2020, uh, whatever it is, through June of 2024. It's, it's, it's a 12 month uh, period rather than the calendar year. That one suggestion. Another suggestion, I think, for example, um, you have an annual business permit and then you have a semi-annual business permit. You know, once again, if you, it, you, can, you can maybe tweak that a little bit, but I think more importantly, if, if I'm a business owner and I have, you know, two employees plus myself and an owner, that means under this scenario, it's 330 per business, per permit. So that means I'm almost, I'm spending almost a thousand dollars for myself and my two employees. My feeling is that you should have an annual business permit for, and maybe do it in such a way that the second and third are, are somewhat reduced to incentivize businesses to really buy these permits, to take these cars, you know, their business owners' cars off the street. We all know about what happens and people with feeding the meters and, you know, parking where they shouldn't and taking the risk to get a $30 ticket rather than spending and investing in, in these in a permit. So I think we need to really look at this in terms of how we're going to make it more um, business friendly for our businesses to, and, 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 and uh, hand in hand, it's going to be more, they're going to be more incentivized to buy the permits because of the enforcement for the, par for, for parking is going to be much more, right. I think we should be penalizing the people that aren't filing the rules rather than the people that are spending money in town. But, but maybe we should, but well, like you said, which is very true, 
we should be giving our businesses a better deal, you know, a, uh, you know, we, to encourage we them, incentivize yeah. them that, you know, what, get with the program, you're going to pay less, but get the permit and get your cars, you know, in the right spots, you know, instead of taking the retail spaces away from our Right. From, I think even visitors. with the permits, they're taking away the retail spaces. Well, they're not, they're, 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 they're doing it's the same cars. It's the same it because I see them right. when I'm looking and, for a parking and that has to, cars. And that has to be dealt with. No, but but, yes. and, and really has to be dressed from a law, law enforcement, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, it's, and quite frankly, it's a revenue issue for the town. I mean, this is, you know, especially now that there are less permits for, um, for commuters, I would right. think that, that that is down, which has always been a tremendous driver this is an opportunity for us to really embrace our business community and, and do the right thing. Do you want to touch on that, that last parking ad hoc because those commuter spots did go, there was an increase in those commuter spots. Yeah. Sure. So, and as Annette mentioned, both she and I serve on this committee and I think our next meeting is in July or August. And I'll, I'll bring these recommendations. One thing that uh, Jackie and, and Richard didn't mention is um, I proposed incentivizing, utilizing the parking deck by making that a cheaper business parking pass than other locations. Uh, maybe someone would be willing to walk an extra five minutes if they can save $50 a year, hundred bucks, you know, right. all of this is to be worked out. But I think we need to start hitting these types of conceptual discussions. Um, I think we don't have a parking allocation problem. We have a compliance problem and we have an enforcement problem. Um, we're working on it as the town, but it needs to come from the TC down. And I think Annette, totally gets it that we got a lot of double parking. We have a lot of people parking, you know, um, in that right turn lane uh, by Rock and Joe's where we've created no parking seven to nine and uh, four to six to try to allow people to make right turns. And then every morning there's somebody parked there and no enforcement. And so um, we, we need to see, there's all the, you can have all the policy you want in the world, um, but unless you enforce it, it doesn't matter. And um, I think the good thing is we're getting a lot of traffic in our town. Um, we're getting a lot of cars, we're getting a lot of shoppers. But when that happens, you also have to come up um, kind of with a prophylactic to figure out how do we you know, deal with these issues. And so um, that's that's a, a huge part of what we're trying to achieve. And it is, I mean, you know, a, a letter went out today, I believe, that they are going to start enforcing uh, the police. And uh, they're going to start enforcing those double parkers and triple parkers. And I, and I see the police down Main Street ticketing every car that's parked there after four o'clock. Yeah. So, you know, I, I do. But it's the morning, too, that has to be addressed. That that, that rush out, right? That's what you're talking about. Well, the, I, I, I see them. The four to six. Years. Yeah. Four the seven to nine. Yeah. You know, when when you're going towards Springfield and you see that the backup, the line is all backed up all the way to ShopRite because, yeah. And non-compliance with parking creates congestion. Congestion creates detours detours create people not coming to our town, right? And we want people to drive through our town and see our businesses and see our flower pots and see the activity. If they're avoiding it because the traffic is so onerous, then we're not doing our job as a city and the town is not doing its job as a business ambassador. And so um, I, I think this is a, a real problem that we're working on. Um, hopefully the recommendations that I'm proposing will get some headway, but um, it's going to be a process, but I think it's very important. And we're going to, and one of the other last thing that I'll say is that one of the things we talked about also is that it, that the town could give out warnings, you know, if there's going to be a sweeping enforcement, you can get a warning, you know, here, you know, what, you know what, uh, summer, end of the summer, that's it. Everybody's, you know, and then, and then you're going to start paying. So, so it's possible to do, you know, do it in a meaningful way also. And then not pay the full annual fee if you have to run in and buy some in September or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, but one more idea, just to throw it, it in the bucket. Does it work that way though? You don't get prorated if you buy. No, 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 it's no, it's it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> what about new? What about? Well, <laughs> that's yeah. a great, so, I that's a great sound bite. Stephen sense. going, it's ridiculous. <laughs> no, correct. I, around the bush. So, I just. just but one uh, one idea though, new businesses maybe give them a, one free or a couple free for the first year, so yeah. they understand it, they get used to it, they see where the right. you know it, it again for long term compliance. Or, or but once again, if you go back to my my suggestion, you the first one you buy, the second one gets reduced oh, because right. you've paid yeah. full boat. Right. Uh, so um, there should be 
group discounts, like so, volume, you know, volume discounts. You know, right. So, you know, so the first one is five hundred dollars. Two to two to you know, two through five is X amount of dollars. And after you know, if you buy five or more, it's you know. So, so really, to so three of the five districts um, really have parking pass requirements. Morris Turnpike and Wyoming don't. Um, but when we looked at the data, eighty percent of the twelve hundred passes that have been purchased already this year are only for two categories, commuter and annual business. So we have 10 different passes, right. but only people only buy two of them. So why do we have so many? Let's start improving the ones that we have, right? So like incentivizing parking in the deck or prorating. Um, Jesse and I had talked about um, maybe making it a, there's a, you do a month to month for people that only intend to maybe if they know they're only going to stay at a job for a couple of months, you know, because they're in retail or restaurant, why should they pay for an annual fee if they know they're never going to be here for 12 months? Um, because I think if we make these more accessible and we consolidate, we can then get more compliance. So And transferability. So like as yeah. if you have a lot of employees turnover, you know, we buy, we buy them for our employees, but like when they leave or kind of stuff, it's like this weird clunky process. Yeah. And there's also this like, it's very sort of like 1990s where, they give you a physical pass yeah. that you're supposed yeah. to give. You have to other. scrape it off the window and turn in rip it shreds to prove that it's been removed oh in God. order to pay like five or ten dollars to have another employee use it. Oh it's like God. literally, Julie had a. Well, we brought literally pieces of rip paper to say here, and yeah. then I said, "Okay, thanks." About them, though, changing it to like placards to hang from the. But it, to me, it's like. It's 2023 and we're like talking whether we should be using placards or not. <laughs> I mean, it's like saying, am I going to take my horse to work today? <laughs> like, guys, we, we got to do better here. Um, and so it's, it's a major concern for us as the SID because virtually every single one of our customers and business owners uses a car. We got to solve the problems. So, and just, just for housekeeping, this is a standing committee, business, uh, business advocacy. And so it's Richard, Jackie and Ashley Schultz. Um, we're on that committee. Speaking of which, Ashley, do you have anything you want to add to our uh, lively, robust discussion? No, <laughs> you, know, you guys covered a lot of it. I mean, from my perspective as a property owner, and then also I have a business in town too. I mean, one of the main things to me is is to really make the barrier of entry easier for yeah. businesses that want to come to town. So, you know, uh, making it easier for the first floor to be a service industry. Um we we have a lot of people in our building that would like to put you know service ideas um in there and and you know right now they have to go for a variance they're just not going to spend that so i mean you know we we compete with westfield and summit and we lose a lot of people to them because of that um you know the parking all all that everything that you're saying i agree with and uh just want to make it you know easier so i'll, I'll make this an ongoing report uh, going forward No, I think uh, okay. Jack goes ahead. No, I think I think we pretty much covered it. Yeah. But I'll, maybe I'll, I'll coordinate uh, with the net. Yes, and I would think maybe you want to talk to uh, to Alexa and Steve as our business owners and what you know what their input is as well. Just from a, I mean, we had Ashley's, but um, I think that would be you know important to two different areas, two different needs interesting both bakeries but <laughs> but that you know but um i think that would be helpful to and, and for general improvements in terms of getting ready for the holidays and signage uh, if you wanted to set up another like uh, a meeting maybe with the finance committee we could kind of talk about a budget and what we could do you know so Our okay. final segment here, Steve, Main Street. Sure. So I am happy to announce the Main Street Pedestrian Mall will be back June 23rd. So that is uh, eight days from today. So we uh, that is a 24-7 closure. So if you remember in years prior, we had done uh, Friday to Sunday, is usually starting around Mother's Day, and then it was a full closure after school. We've abandoned the spring closures due to logistics and cost. Now it's just going to be a full closure from uh, June 28th through Labor Day weekend, so September 4th. 28th or 23rd? I'm sorry, 23rd. I apologize. Um, 
we have some exciting stuff uh, in terms of, you know, really this year we're going to focus on increasing brand awareness. This is a giant two month billboard for Explore Milburn. And so um, we're going to have uh, new A-frame signs detailing a lot of the um, programming that we have in the, in the uh, mall. We're going to have uh, new A-frame signs to point people towards businesses that are in other parts of the town. So, you know, go towards the book house and mariachi, go towards um, teen skin and splurge. And um, we're going to work on, on how we're going to lay that signage out. Um, we're also going to have new, uh, new signage on the barricades uh, on the interior side, obviously. Um, and that's going to have, uh, there'll be probably eight to 10 um, different uh, it's, sort of it's, stickers. It's, it's like a decal that goes in the middle. Uh, other uh, restaurants in another town have done this, so we're going to use that to our advantage because printing uh, banners and other things, they, the, the wind just takes them right down. So these things are already in place. So the concept will be something like our logo and it'll say, does live music, our logo does public art right. and just give us an opportunity to explain what we do in a passive way. Um, there's going to be more public seating. One of the big things that we want to go for this year is to help uh, not just the businesses in the mall, but other ones surrounding it. So we're going to now have uh, instead of two, we're going to have three picnic tables. We're going to add five wooden benches and end tables. Um, we're going to uh, bring in high top tables uh, from the art alley. We're going to have uh, two kid sized picnic tables. We're going to have our chessboard back out. We have now two Connect Four boards and two giant Jenga sets. Um, so there's a lot that is going to be in this space and it's going to be great. And then the TC is considering at their next meeting uh, restaurants to have the ability to essentially rent space in the mall uh, through the, um, uh, through the, uh, the, what is the word for it? The sidewalk. The sidewalk cafe license. So um, if you're a pizzeria and you're two blocks away, um, but you want to have the ability for your patrons to take a box of pizza and sit at one of your chairs, you can place those chairs that will be reserved for your customers, and then they can walk down. You could also do delivery. Um, so what we're going to be including in all the public seating is a list of all the restaurants in the town. One side of the page will be downtown. The other side will be the outer districts, and then uh, folks can have a QR code that takes them to our website. So we really want to make this very inclusive of, of all five districts, although obviously it's a static physical location. Um, so I think all things are great. We invite you guys to come out on June 23rd. Uh, Friday night, we have an awesome jazz guitarist who's playing. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So that music starts at 630. You can make your reservations if you can at different restaurants, um, but it's going to be a nice time. And then uh, yesterday I had a, our executive committee meeting and we talked about, um, well, we talked about climate change is what we talked about. Um, and, and some of the concerns uh, or parameters that we wanted to put in place concerning the, uh, the outdoor area. So obviously there was this strange smoke condition last week for girls night out. Um, we were forced to make a lot of changes and, and I think it brought a new wrinkle to what we do in terms of outdoor events. So that spurred on a conversation that Michael, Stephen, Tracy, and I had. And then I said, you know, we really only have one uh, outdoor event going on this summer, which is the pedestrian mall. We have 35 musical acts, plus the open streets program, which is yoga, cycling, et cetera. Um, and so the suggestion was, let's put together some basic parameters related to uh, concerning weather. And so it's on your agenda here, and, and um, we'd love to have a discussion about this. Um, we're thinking that if there's a situation where there's um, unhealthy, severe, or hazardous air conditions, um, and that's from the New Jersey DEP, um, that a decision would be made six hours prior to cancel an event. If the temperature is above 95 degrees and there's a concern over heat, that a decision would be made 12 hours prior. And then if there are hurricane issues, um, we'll have certainly a lot more lead time, um, that a decision would be made 24 hours prior. So um, if those, any of those three metrics are met, it's my responsibility to speak to the band or the other vendors and say, the event is postponed due to these conditions. Um, the vendors will be paid 50% of their event fee if it's canceled, because obviously they've blocked out that time. Um, and then language would be included in all the band contracts going forward, explaining this. Um, we do have a rain policy that's in all of our contracts. Um, we, if we know a weekend is gonna be a washout, we let the bands know they don't get paid because they sort of never leave the house. But um, if they come and it's an on and off again, on, on again, off again storm, we tell them to wait one hour 
Um, if it doesn't clear, we do give them a portion of what they would have been paid. Um, there are situations where a band is playing for two hours, a storm rolls through, they can't complete their set. We pay them for the time um, that they spent. So unfortunately, this isn't you know a one plus one equals two situation because you're dealing with live entertainment and weather. Uh, but I think this is a very sensible way of approaching um, what tends to be now very unpredictable weather. So um, I'll, I'll pass it off to the executive committee if they want to add anything. But, uh, I think this is good direction. Yeah, I think uh, what, and forgive me, I, I was actually away last week and all my uh, observations of the storm clouds and fire clouds were from sunny Florida where the sky was clear, but, but obviously it was a problem and something that we need to consider. And we were on the phone and texting each other saying, you know, how do we handle this yeah. last week for knowing girls night out and hundreds of people and vendors and all those things and people who you don't want to put at risk if you, don't, uh, if you have the opportunity to keep everybody safe. And that's some of the thought here. Um, you know, what are the touch points for the summer? Well, if it gets too hot, it might be a little tough for a band. Um, you know, people are free to come and go as they please, but we have a little responsibility. We don't want to create a, a scenario where people are at risk. So that was, this was what we came up with. I don't know if there's any other thoughts, um, other conditions we may have missed. I mean, rain is typical, but hurricane is obvious. Um, as I said, we do have a rain policy in place already. Yeah. Yeah, trying to set up objective criteria so that we don't have that swirl ahead of time. Like, what do we do? What do we do? And I think it's almost a moral obligation to protect every. We can't support and encourage everyone to go outside if the air is hazardous, right? right. So, it you know, and I mean, I'm thinking about six hours because the conditions change very rapidly yeah. that one day right. within out two hours. It was a surprise to everyone. So, it, I'm not sure about that. I'm I'm also thinking about. I know it's too complicated, but like if it's 95, 90, it, there's a humidity factor. I mean, it could be oppressive if it's 90 and like huge humidity, you know? So like, I think there still needs some flexibility, obviously. Right. Um, and then also we're being awfully generous with this refund policy or the paying them anyway. So if we call it because there's a hurricane within 24 hours, are you suggesting we still pay them half? I, that I, was I mean, discussed yesterday. Nothing yeah, I know we did. Stone. I know we did talk about it, but this so, feels a little like if it's hazardous air, they should want to go inside themselves. Like, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if their busy schedule says, oh, we know you blocked the night. You know, I, I think a little more thinking around that policy makes sense to me as well. But the, the I, band, well, but I, I just have two things. The, I, I, I think, I think you just said. For, for the music, I think you just said, if, if it's a six o'clock performance, I think you, your cutoff time is 2 p.m. So everybody knows at 2 p.m. of the, the day of whether or not it's a yay or a nay. If the, if, I think that rather than four hours before, four hours before what? The time that they're supposed to start, the time that they come to set up, what, you know, just have a whatever, because some may come earlier, some may come later. You just have a, a time, that, a cutoff time, whatever it is, two o'clock, three o'clock, whatever. It's probably two o'clock because some of the bands are coming from long distances. I do think that in the scheduling, maybe we should hold a couple of rain date, like rain date rescheduled, like I know the township does for the, uh, for the summer concert series so that we have some flexibility so that if, you know, you're, you know, and maybe, you know, you, they have a June date and it's an August date. And if the second date is canceled, then I, I, I understand that it's more in terms of scheduling and it's more complicated. But maybe, you know, you, you say that this is the rain date for the entire schedule and they have that as a backup because the or, or two or three nights to make it maybe that way a little bit more comprehensive. And if that rain date is rain again, then we pay them. So or something like that, yeah. if that's. Yeah. It's not just the performance. It's the, you don't want your residents being encouraged to come out and risk getting hit by lightning. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's not just you know. There's the yes, but particularly yeah, the, I agree. But, but but these bands book the time, and it, you know it's it, they, they there's a certain they you know they're they're counting on that money for their livelihood, and it's not their fault if it rains or it's not ours. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. So I, I want to be fair, but these are conditions that are out of our control too. So if we make the call around safety 
of, of the audience members, of residents. I'm, I'm not, I'm trying not to be too inflexible, obviously, but it, it isn't our fault either. These things are pretty obviously dangerous for everybody involved. So. I, that's I, think, I think, I think the, um, the yeah, vendors yeah. need to be considered because this is part of their livelihood. We have a great DJ that comes to all of our events. This is what he does full time. Right. So I think if we, I would like to do a little more research about how other uh, towns are handling right. this, towns are handling yeah. this. Because once we put that in a contract, it's in front of them. They make, they make that decision whether they're going to comply to that or they're not going to work with us. But I, I do well, think that's the thing. And, and yeah, right. It may be dangerous outside, but maybe they could have booked someplace inside. Yeah. Right. yeah right. So no, that's right. Good point. I mean, so, people are making a lot. You don't want to penalize them. Yeah, but yeah, people are sure. traveling a long distance to come to us and they're, and they're, and they're part of our community or they're, they're you know, this is what they do. Right. You know, we certainly don't want to hurt them. And, no, you, know, I agree. you know, so it's a balancing act. Yeah, exactly. I also feel that people are coming to that closure, whether there's music or there's not, because that closure is packed all summer long. Mm -hmm. Whether there's music or there's no music, it's packed. So I don't see, I don't see the, uh, I don't see us encouraging people to come out for performances because they're already there. You know, if they're yeah. gonna go out, they're gonna go out. I think the music is just an added, the entertainment is just an added. Uh, you know. I'll and tell you, I stay longer because of the music. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> you know. the, I, the other thing I feel really strongly about, I think we should set up a schedule and we should be introducing, it's our opportunity to at six o'clock yep. for 10 minutes to say, welcome. This is this event is sponsored by Explore Milburn Short Hills. The business, I mean, I think we really need to let people know that there is an organization and a commitment and a process and a policy. And uh, I'll sign up for the 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, we, but I think we should just really try. You know, for all board members, for you know. all board members, absolutely, yeah. and and our our subcommittees, they our subcommittees. they, I mean, yeah. everybody can have an opportunity to to be there. Yeah. We're not allowed to put signage on the outside of those. Not that I'm aware. Yeah. It's distracting right. also for yeah. drivers. You don't want them to be reading it when they you need it's to. Supposed to be gotcha. And Amanda, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. We could, so with all the great events we're having, and we're capturing a, a we have a growing database mm -hmm. so are we going to use that database to invite people to the town for you know for the closure and oh yeah absolutely so for for the weekend i just had to get through through last week <laughs> no, I, I know i was i, I was watching no, you no pressure no, no, <laughs> yeah, no i'm not trying to put more on your plate i'm just saying you know from a marketing point of view we're, we have all this database of people that are coming right right you no. know it'd be great to send them a reminder yeah, but I, I know you work here. You're doing a great job. Well, I, I hate to rain on everybody's parade. <laughs> um, but we do have a concert scheduled um, for eight days from now. So do we want to have a decision at least on some basic parameters um, so that at least I have some, some marching orders? Do you think, I think Jackie's point is valid to say, if the music starts at 6.30, it's four hours back from that or i mean personally right. time might be easier than six it's hours the flat four time. Hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um whether it's one o'clock two o'clock yeah. right but I, I, mean, I do think we just sense. need to take into account you know especially because they're bands you know they're packing and prepping yeah. Yeah. many hours in advance and so traveling and they're traveling i mean i would want to know pretty far in advance that this is not going to happen um mm -hmm. so I'm even comfortable with 12 hours ahead or, you know, whatever it is, if it's going to be. I, I think that, that, because it can eight change. hours. I mean, yeah, things, these summer storms. No, I would say noon. You know, you have, you have two extremes, right? You have what happened last week. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Then you just have a summer storm that right. may come in and out between two o'clock and four o'clock. It's right. And we, we've been very environment. flexible. We move bands uh, when we've, you know, I, I text with them during the day. Um, and they'll, you know, we know there's a storm coming from two to four. Well, you guys want to play later on? Sure. And so we just move them back and, and it works. Um, so a lot of this is, you know, doing it on the fly. But if let, I think I'd like a baseline. If the, if the number is four hours ahead of time, that's fine. I just 
wants some direction. Yeah, we could also yeah. leave it to your discretion. You know, your, your sometimes your, the weather it, it'll be more predictable. Why don't we give you the? Why don't you say between twelve and two? How's that? Um, well, yeah. it doesn't work for Sundays because music starts at uh, nine thirty. Oh, right. Um, because we do it. So do four seven. hours before. Do nine o'clock. Four right. hours before. Um, you know, with my discretion. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Well, you won't I, have to worry about temperature for this weekend. I, I think this is similar to schools making decisions about snow. Uh, yeah. right. I think sometimes uh, we're going to make a decision and it's going to go the other way. And we just have to be OK with it. Yeah, because there's we can only control so much. And, it, and I don't think it's a fortune. I mean, every penny is always we always want to worry about every penny. But I think if, if a mistake is made or weather changes suddenly, you know, it's not a, it's not. A lot, it's not a lot of money. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. No, so right. we want to stick with a fifty percent event fee. I, I think it's fair. I all. I, I hear what you're saying. I think day. it's more There's of a paying it forward now. as much as anything. So we do have the option of rain dates because yeah. except that we're booked for all the dates. Right? Yeah. We're we're no, booked, but. Like, Things happen. Bands cancel. Right. Um, we could always slot people into Thursday nights. Right. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. Pardon me? Your mic is in oh. well, You know, we can slot them in for Thursdays. We can do a double header on a Saturday. You know, we can do an afternoon. Uh, I can always make it work. So, although they're prepping and stuff, I, I would say fifty percent. And then we would just pay them the remaining fifty percent once they play on the rain date, and then they're made whole. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if you get oh, paid three hundred dollars, yep. you get one fifty if you get canceled, and then we reschedule. Yeah. That's, 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 them that's great. Yeah. Right. And then then, then they, want, they were paid, but they, they were going to get paid. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good to. idea. Okay. Yeah. I'll make that clear. And I like the idea of like a pop up on a <clears throat> Tuesday night or a Thursday, yeah. and I'm sure, and you know, I'm, Thursday nights. Are yeah, Thursday night. nights are great. We have one yeah. Thursday night both um, in the summer. Yeah, yeah. but right. as as these rain dates happen, it you just start running out of days, and you got to start right. putting right. people on Thursdays, right. and which can add to the fun of it, I guess. Right. But thank you all. If that's so. That's exciting. This Friday. Yes. Well, who's our uh, entertainment? Uh, oh, right, a week from tomorrow. Yes, uh, a guitarist called Courtney Sappington. He has a, he's got an excellent uh, couple albums that you can find on YouTube, and it's guitar, jazz. Uh, we're we're staying somewhat thematic this year. Fridays are going to be kind of a more chilled out vibe. I've scheduled bands that are more relaxed so that everyone can unwind on their Friday night, and then the Saturday nights are a little bit more lively, and then Sundays will be um, a little bit more family friendly. So. Um, if you look into Thursdays, the concerts in the park. Yes. Thursdays. Yes. Just make sure that the schedule. Right. Right. Except the first one. First one is this one. Right. Okay. Moving on. Uh, and and, and we're starting. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean. And we're starting uh, six six o'clock, six thirty. Six thirty on. Fridays are six thirty, and what is and Saturday? Saturdays are six thirty, and Sundays are. 1 30 if i were i'll be there with you if you will oh, good. we can yeah. microphone it again absolutely <laughs> you, you got a date anybody else want to join us we'll yeah, be there it's good fun we go from table to table <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a scene don't tempt her i know she it's, will uh, listen, <laughs> we, 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 we've, we've been done that. that we've done it uh any other uh discussion new business okay uh, public comments when invited to speak, please come to the lectern, state your name, speak into the microphone so you can be recorded. You will have three minutes to speak. Is anybody, I don't see anybody up there. Am I right? Okay. So, what is Mr. Feld? Come on. I'm Jeffrey Feld, Short Hills, New Jersey. Um, yes, I wasn't here Thursday, but it, my reunion was almost canceled because of that disaster. Um, Jesse, if you can go back. And you can put on the public the black line copy of the commercial solid waste ordinance. The, the TC discussed it, but no one could find it. But I think it would help the business owners to see the black line ordinances of the changes. Um, as to the Main Street pedestrian mall closure, um, I just heard before about moral obligations. The tap into Milburn had to change their article three times. Originally, they wrote that it was only the closure was only two days the weekends like in Ridgewood rather than 24 seven. There's a question as to when you use the word pedestrian mall, the municipal attorney would not opine as to what statute went on, whether you had to find safety. 
There's a question as to the effective date of this ordinance. The municipal attorney has never opined. You have two municipal attorneys here. Does it go immediately effective or do you have to wait 20 days from notice of publication, which was just today? So you might be holding an event pursuant to an ordinance that's not yet effective. Remember, there's another piece because as to the state, there's been no, made no request. No one knows if the state has approved it. I've not received any documents. The clerk has no documents. As to the bare properties, read the opinion. The opinion says if we win the case, the town has to pay us back the money. That's in there. Also, we're waiting as the status. We're waiting for the judge to send us to mediation. Judge Moore said in April 2021, go to mediation, but the town decides to litigate. We spend more than $100,000 on discovery that had no relevance to the case. Also, you might want to look at an opinion that came out today by the appellate division. As to that motion, I requested oral argument. I had a right, as a right, that plaintiff had to be heard, according to the appellate division today. And two, when the opinion, the order was in, the reason should have been attached at that moment. So if I ever had to go back to the appellate division about what happened, that judge is going to get spanked for what he did not do. Last Thursday, when you had um, Girls' Night Out, Thursday was when you look as a historical day, many things happened that day. So I had a former president getting indicted. The United States Supreme Court had a case in Alabama about redistricting and about votes. One issue that's been here that no one's ever approached, that you are appointed, you're not elected by the people pay the taxes. That's an issue that has to be heard by the courts. And as it goes back to the audits as to whether this is a controlled entity by the TC, because you're appointed, never elected as an officer, which is differs from that. In addition, what we had, uh, can I have maybe 30 seconds? Yeah, more? 30 seconds, sure. Listen carefully by certain admissions that were made by the TC at the last TC meeting and prior by Mr. Washington. Mr. Van uh, Vineyak stated that Mr. Wasserman did not understand what he was approving. He had said this as to two different legislations. Please be careful. You swap out moral obligations. Do not discount what I said. Because today at the CETA meeting, I went to the June 14th, the Juneteenth matters. I've known all those people from the NAACP who talked about it. 30 seconds, not, not Thank 90 you. seconds. Thank you. You, Thank could, you. you could wrap up. No, right? just saying that people, a lot of times people discount what I've been saying. We've been having a, been, or Levecki have been dealing with each other for like 12 years. Do not discount what I am saying as to the law. Good evening, Vicki Powell, business owner. Uh, first, I want to uh, chirp in about the parking. I totally agree. I know Steve and I have had this discussion. I've sent an email. Summits now um, increase their fees. They call it meter jumping also when they, they leave their spot and go somewhere else. I also think it's important that when we have new businesses come into town, we educate them and tell them about the permits because I know there are some businesses that are new in town that did not know this fact. So I think, I don't know if you give new businesses a packet on what's going on. I think it needs to be included in there because... Uh, you know, and it's not only that, and also if they're doing construction in town, the construction vehicles should not be parking on the streets. I know I'm having that problem and I've addressed it with them and it's been fixed, but that's, it's a, it's a problem. It's, it's been a problem for 38 years that we've been in business. So I definitely think that has to be addressed, but on a happy note, I just have to say as a business owner and uh, somebody who participated in Girls' Night Out, yes, I was on the committee and everything, but it was such a wonderful event. It was well-organized and you guys made it happen. The business entity that gave us this uh, uh, event, sorry. Uh, so I just wanna thank you all for approving it and coming up with these ideas and doing these events for the business community because it did help us. I, had, I went around and I spoke to at least four to five different businesses and they all said, what a fabulous night it was. It was great to see everyone walk in town. They had great business. It was a great vibe. So we have to keep continuing to do this to bring businesses, the business uh, into the town. I also have to say that I did get new customers. I had a lady from Madison that said, this uh, Girls Night Out was fabulous. Madison cannot even compare to it. And it's a customer that I know I'm gonna get back. So I just wanted to thank you 
for keeping up and letting uh, doing being the business district for us. I also want to thank Amanda. She worked so hard. The templates that she did for social media, she just she just hit it out of the park. It was just it was a pleasure to work with her, but she really did above and beyond. I mean, I can't thank her enough. I really can't. She really did an awesome job. And like she said, we now have the template for next year, so we don't have to really do much. We just have to go out. I'm sure we're going to get more sponsors. I'm sure we're going to get more swag bags because it was just such a great event. So I want to thank you and you too, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she really did uh, the best. So thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yes, we the had a great committee. Great. And that's great. I mean, that's what we should do. If you're going to do events, reach out to the merchants. I'm sure we'll be happy to help you. And you know, there are only two people and you guys, you know, you guys have your, but these two are the ones that are here. So if you ask for help, I'm sure you will get more people to help you because it was, I mean, everyone on the committee loved to do it. We're here every Friday morning <laughs> meeting. So yeah. So if you ask, we can help. So thank Great. you. Thank you. Great job. All right. Uh, before we adjourn, just programming note. Uh, our next meeting <laughs> is not until Tuesday, September 12th, 6.30 p.m. Uh, budget workshop. And then we have Thursday. Uh, oh, Tuesday, September yes, 12th. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. I knew something. It avoids right? the Jewish holidays. The holidays oh. Yes. And then the following meeting will be Thursday, October 19th. Our annual meeting at 5.30. Now I know yes. I will not be at that annual meeting. Is that is that being oh, no. carved in stone? <laughs> yes. That date is carved in stone. Okay. Okay. I will stone tablets. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Anything else before we have our? Uh, if I could just have Stephen, yeah, yeah, Michael, yeah. Tracy, and Lex stay for a few moments. We have to get a couple dates on the calendar. Yes. Okay. Okay, yeah, motion to adjourn. <laughs>